Now let's get started. You're on time. All right. So I want to finish up some stuff over this buoyancy, and then we got a lab to do on buoyancy once we get into the fact. So what does your buoyant force always equal? No. You can see that displacement of the air around it, or the fluid around it. The weight of the fluid. The weight of the fluid. Around. The weight of the fluid that is displaced. Okay, that's what your buoyant force always equals. Now, what else is always there besides buoyant force? Gravity. Gravity. Okay. So let's say that I take a container of water, right, and I put a ping pong ball in it. Okay. Floats. Brilliant. Why does it float? Force buoyancy is greater than force, force gravity. So let's 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 go through with what is it equal? I don't know. Okay, let's, apparently it's equal. Uh, oh no 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 okay, no no whatever. No no. We're gonna go Hold with on. This idea. Oh no! I mean, don't yes, do it! Don't yes, do it! Yes. No. Yes. 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 So. I bet something so bad. Here's the beaker. Now, this is going to be important in terms of the lab today. I am so sorry, class. No, no, no. You're fine. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Okay? So here's the water level. As a ping pong ball. <laughs> did you have to give him the lotion? I didn't give him oh, the lotion. I thought you said I'm sorry, like, for giving him No, I said I'm sorry for saying the wrong answer. No, no, no. You're fine. So here's the deal. Is, let's go with the basic idea. Is the ping pong ball accelerated? No. No. So that means all the forces have to add up to zero. Zero. So I've got gravity pulling down, right? So something has to be acting up. And that's going to be the point force. Okay? Now, since it's not accelerating, these two forces. <laughs> Go. The, the two forces have to balance out, okay? Because if the buoyant force is bigger, what's going to happen? It's going to accelerate. So, look at this. If I take this ping pong ball and I push it down, okay? Number one, my fingers. Are Your great. fingers are huge. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> Refraction. Water makes them grow. Wow. Okay. Now, so. His thumb. I know, it's just... It looks huge. Oh, index of refraction. Okay, so at this point, is the system still in equilibrium? Yes. No. Not How? It's not moving. No, no, no. If I add together all of the forces right now, what do I get? Like with zero. your hand being with there. With my hand. There's zero, because it's not accelerating. There's zero. So what three forces are acting on... The ping pong ball. Gravity. Gravity is pulling down. Point force. Now, if I let go of it, what's going to happen? It's going to go up. Then it's going to begin to accelerate, right? So, if I hold it completely underneath the water, okay, down here, I still have the exact same FG, right? But if I push it completely underneath the water, what's going to happen to my buoyant force? Will it stay the same? Will it get bigger? Or will it get smaller? It wouldn't have to get bigger. Why? No, it stays the same. It stays the same. It's exact same buoyant force. It should, because aren't you... Because you're not changing anything. Oh, it's going to have to increase. I don't you're not know. Changing your no. no. I'm thinking of so many different scenarios. You're not changing the weight of the Okay. Yeah. How can we calculate the buoyant force? Three things. We need the density of the fluid, right? That it's, that it's displacing. The volume of the fluid that is displacing, right? And gravity. So here's the deal. When this thing is floating here, okay? Do I have very much volume that's below the surface? No. No. So when it's floating here, I'm not displacing very much of the fluid. Okay? 
But I don't have to have much of a buoyant force because of the fact that gravity is pretty small, right? So I don't have to displace a lot of it. Now, when I go over here, it's the exact same fluid. There's still G. But now what's happened to the volume of the fluid that's been displaced? It increased. It's gotten bigger. bigger. So the buoyant force is bigger. bigger. Okay? Now, so I've still got the same FG, but now I'm going to have a bigger buoyant force. So here's my question. What's the direction of the force that my hand had to apply? Was my hand holding it up? Or was my hand pushing it down? Pushing it down. Pushing it down. Why? To balance out the buoyant force. Ah, well, to balance out the difference between the buoyant force and gravity, right? So if you view this from a vector standpoint, here's my gravitational force. So the force that I have to apply is going to be the difference between these two. So as soon as I let go, I lose my fat. The buoyant force is bigger. bigger, it begins to accelerate Accelerate upwards. Okay? Bless you. Got it? Now, what if I did this? What if I were to take, and this is what's going to happen in the lab today. So here I've got a chunk of aluminum. So I'm going to hook this up. We talked about this yesterday. And with this one, Okay, I'm going to submerge it. So, is there a buoyant force acting on the aluminum block? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is the buoyant force bigger or smaller than gravitational's pull? Smaller. Smaller. And that's why now the tension is acting. Okay. So let's just let's think about this for just a second. Okay. So, with this one, with the, with the aluminum block, right, I've got some FG acting down. Do I have a buoyant force? Yeah. Yes, because it's displacing a fluid, right? I have some buoyant force. But the gravitational force is greater than the buoyant force is. So, therefore, what's going to happen? I have to apply an upward force to... <laughs> Balance it out. So basically, when you have any situation, there are three things that take place. Three possible situations. If it's just floating, whether it's completely submerged below the water, doesn't make any difference. If there's no external forces at all, no t there's no tension, there's no push, nothing. Okay, You are what we call neutrally buoyant. And the gravitational force acting down it's just being balanced out by the buoyant force acting up. Okay, that's it. Boom. That's it. If your gravitational force is greater than your buoyant force, then to keep it there, you're going to have to apply some upward force. If you've got to keep it held down, so has anybody like been in the swimming pool and you've tried to like hold down a football or a, or a beach ball? Okay, it's tough to do, right? Because of the fact that as you push it down, what happens to your buoyant force? It gets bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So therefore, it takes more and more and more force to hold that underneath the water. So as soon as you let go of it, point, there you go. So at the end of the day, how did life vests work? Why did life vests allow you to float? Yeah, they're creating an additional buoyant force. Okay, that's it. Right? They created an additional buoyant force. So, now, there's one confusing thing that can happen with volume. Okay? So, let's say that the ping pong ball and the golf ball are the same volume. Okay? So, if I put the, the golf ball in there, right? Oh, can you do it again? I didn't see it satisfy me. <laughs> well, by all means. <laughs> <laughs> oh Which just sounds so weird. Okay? Yeah, right? That has a lot of tools. Right? It does have yeah, a lot of ready. tools. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. Now, it's slow motion. It's kind of like now. So here's the deal. The golf ball sinks, right? But it sinks pretty slowly, so it's, it's like in slow motion. So do you think that the gravitational force is a lot bigger than the buoyant force, or are they about the same? Yeah, about the same. Gravity's got a slight edge, but not a lot. So if this was a little less massive, I could drop it, and then it would reach a point where it could just float. Okay? All right? So if I take the ping pong ball and submerge it, okay, so if the two volumes are the same, okay, listen to me. If the two volumes are the same, which one has the greater buoyant force? If the two volumes are the same. The golf ball or the ping pong ball when they're both below the water line? Which one has the greater buoyant force? When they're, the same. when they're both at the very bottom, they're doing the same. Neither. The same. They're going to have the exact same buoyant force. Why? Because it's displacing the same fold. Okay. Now, huh? Yeah, as long as they're both below the surface. They just have different FGs. Okay. Good with that. Two objects can have a different density, but different. The same buoyancy, He's looking for a multiple yes. choice. That's because That's when you crazy. look at the equation of the buoyant force, it's the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid that's displaced times G. Right? Good with this. So notice that it doesn't depend upon the density of the object. It only depends upon the volume of the object and the density of the fluid. Good with that. Good. Okay, now let's talk about this ping pong one. Because if you can do the math on this one, everything else is going to be relatively simple. So here's this ping pong ball, right? So do you think the density of the ping pong ball is pretty close to the density of water or way off? Close. I don't know. Pretty close. Pretty close? Well, let me put it this way. For those of anybody here on the swim team or swam a lot, be sure to swim. Roughly, roughly. Here's the water. <laughs> You're floating. Okay. Roughly, what percentage of your body is below the water line? Fifty. Fifty percent. Okay, I can live with that. Okay. So when I look at the ping pong ball, is very much the ping pong ball below the water line? Both. Yeah, not very much, right? Pretty small amount. So here's what we're going to do, is we're going to figure out kind of what we can do mathematically on this dude. So here's the whole key to this particular problem. When it's floating, okay, when it's floating, what do you know about the two forces? Buoyancy and gravity. Equal each other. Okay? So the buoyant force, You're only come on. Buoyant force has to equal FG, right? Now, what do I need to calculate the buoyant force? I need three things. I need the density of the fluid. Volume displaced. of the object. Now, here's the question. Do I use the entire volume of the object? Oh, yes. How would you know the volume of what's submerged? Just, I, I don't, just stay with me. He doesn't care how it gets it. Okay, here's my question. Is this going to be the volume? Here's what I need. Is that going to be the total volume or the volume that's submerged? I'm saying total. Volume that is I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm saying volume that's just submerged because if I push that down, we establish that I create a big, greater buoyant force, right? Yeah. Right. So this is just going to be the volume that's submerged, right? So will an object not have a higher volume like if it's once it's submerged like it can't get any bigger than that yeah then, then you've maxed out your buoyant force so like no matter if it's like however like even if it's a couple more feet submerged like it doesn't matter it, it as long as once it gets it's fully submerged boom that's there's it nothing. so is this just this, this is the final buoyant force of anything that's this submerged. is true this is true you speak words of truth okay good now that's going to be times g right so if I know the density of the fluid, which is water, which is 1,000 grams per cubic meter, 
If I know the volume that's submerged, which is going to be a pretty small number, multiply that by g, there we go. Now, what do I need to calculate gravitational force? Mg. Mg, right? Now, one option is that I can just find the mass of the ping pong ball. But we're going to play a little bit of a, of a shell game in terms of a ratio. So, Hunter's right, it's in G, right? But let's just say that I, I'm going I'm to look at this from a density and volume standpoint of the ping pong ball, right? Okay. So I'm going to have this as the density of the ping pong ball times the ball. Times the ping pong Yeah. The ping <laughs> times the volume of the ping pong ball, right? Times G. Now, is this the entire volume of the ping pong ball? Mm, yes. Yes, because that whole thing is this density times that entire volume is going to get me the mass. So you can always substitute rho v for m. Okay. Rho. Oh, it's the Greek letter rho for density. Okay, okay, got it. Now, kind of, fu kind of funny things going to happen. What's going to happen to the G's in this situation? They cancel out. Oh, they cancel out. Oh, that's kind of cool. I hate you. <laughs> I don't know what does Bradley score is yours. Good. I don't care. Now, which one do you think is going to be bigger? The density of the ping pong ball or the density of the fluid? The density of the fluid. The fluid is more. Right? So I'm going to divide this. I'm going to take the density of the ping pong ball, right? Ping pong ball. Divided by the density of the fluid. Now, over here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the volume that's submerged and divide that by the volume of the ping pong ball. Now, interesting thing happens. These two things have to be equal, right? So roughly, shut up. <laughs> so roughly, roughly, ballpark, what percentage of the ping pong ball is submerged? Roughly. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 25 percent? 25 percent? No, that's not a four. That's, it's like, that's it's 15, like 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 17. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. What do you think the density of the ping pong ball is relative to the density of the fluid? 20%. 20%. So if the density of the fluid in this case is water, which is 1,000 grams, kilograms per cubic meter, the density of the ping pong ball has to be 200. 200. <coughs> so if you look at... Stop. <laughs> Kick him out. <laughs> So, when, when Skippy the swimmer here said that when he was swimming or floating about 50% of his body was below the water line, that means that your density then is about 50% that of water. So your overall density is about 500 kilograms per cubic meter. So if you know how much is submerged, that percentage, then you can figure out the density of that fluid. Whoa. Now, this obviously doesn't work if it sinks. Okay? That's true. This only works if it floats. Okay? It only works if it floats. Now, an interesting concept. So let's take this out. I really need you to stop being honest. Yeah, that's. It was funny like the Sorry. first time. No, it wasn't. The, the it wasn't nine, funny the first time. The, the nine times afterwards. Why does everybody have a smile on their face? Because it's so. It's, it's, like, so it's like that one okay. If anyone else would say it, we'd be like, shut up. But like you say it, it's just like, oh my God, no. Freezing. Okay. Now, so here's what I want to think about. So I've got this piece of wood with a machine piece of aluminum on top of it. Okay? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put this in water, okay? How's that staying down? What do you mean? How is it screwed into it? Oh, it's oh. screwed into it. <laughs> I honestly magic. thought, I didn't see it, and I thought there were two separate pieces in there. Just staying on. 
Physics okay. magic. Stay, stay curious, my friend. Stay curious. <laughs> okay. Up next, what's in right. blue? So I'm going to put this in here. Okay. And it's going to flow. Okay? Guarantee if you flip it around, it sinks on. No, let's talk about that. That's actually where we're going to go with this idea. Okay? So, right now, if you notice, the water level is basically right at the top of the wood. Okay? If you look at this, the water level is right at the top of the wood. So, here's my question. It's floating. True? True. Okay? So, here's what we've got, right? The machine part. And then we've got the water like this. Okay? So, what are the two forces acting? Gravity, gravity. gravity is pulling it down, right? And the buoyant force is acting up. True? True? So let's go with what Reese said. Okay? Everything's in equilibrium at this point, right? So now I'm going to take it out and I'm going to flip it over. Okay? I'm going to flip it over. So three things could happen. Okay, so here's the water. <laughs> There's three things that could happen. One option is that because the aluminum is going to be down below, we just showed that aluminum sinks. That it's going to, it's going, to, it's not going to float. It's going to drop like a rock. Okay, that's an option. All right, it's an option. Option number two is that the water level is going to be the exact same as it was before. Okay? So in other words, the water level is basically going to come to this point right here. Okay? Right? It's going to be the exact same point. Actually, there's four options. Option number three is that the water level will basically completely submerge it. Okay? That one just get that erased. <laughs> the other option is that it's just it's still going to sink, but it won't quite, but it won't sink quite as far. So I like that. So it can sink. It can. We can basically only submerge the aluminum part. It can go right to the top of the level, or it can be a little bit below this point, something like here. I want option five. What's the fifth option? Right. Halfway. It Halfway. Had nothing like, like here? No, like it's in, it's in the middle of the water. <laughs> it's in the middle of the water. <laughs> what is in the middle of the water? In the middle the of the water. Object. Meaning like with the water level is here and the bottom of the beaker is here. Alright, put it in. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. We're going to see what's going to happen. So, That's okay. So how many people think it's just going to sink? Honestly, I think it might One, I know. I think there's just a... I agree, two... I can't think that's sick. I don't know what the... Thing. Two, two Honestly, people are on the Titanic. Because he just added it. Okay? I'm not feeling Titanic. It's going to sink. How many people think that only the metal part is going to be below the water line and the rest of the wood's going to stay up above? It's going to sink fully. I changed my answer. Okay? Garfield's now on the I Titanic. I throw it in there, so. Anybody else going to jump on the Titanic? The Titanic was playing. Okay. So nobody's on. It's going to be at this point. How about it's going to go back to the exact same point that it was? No, that would be there. Right? Yeah. So in other words, the water level is basically going to come right up to the top. Oh. That makes sense. <laughs> no. I'm going to vote that one. Just be the only one. That one. That one. No, more. Yes. The points are going to be higher. I want five, 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 six, 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 Kendra, I'm telling you that's wrong. I'm sorry, I'm voting. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Okay. What is barely on? You ready for Buster, man? Bubby, what do you want? This one you're about to say. I want yeah, to go to this one level. where it's just a little bit, in other words, it's going to sit a little bit higher? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Okay. Because you added that one in last, that's and you fine. wouldn't add in the wrong answer. What? <laughs> that's fine. I, like I wouldn't add one. in the, I put four answers up there. Too bad. Yeah, well, you started with three, and then you're like, oh, it's the right answer. All right. Too bad. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What'd you say? Huh? What'd you say? Two. Which was what? The crown goes under. It's giving me a Guess the crown? I don't know. Oh, no. Oh, please be right. Oh, I'm right. Oh, God. 
I told you guys you wouldn't add in the wrong answer. Oh. Now, bug me. Why are you right? I don't know. Don't look at me like that, Hunter. Here's the point. Is it still floating? I can tell you why. Right. When I flip it over, did I change FG? No. No. So if it's floating, I still have the exact same FG, right? And the same. That's when the no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now it's floating, so do I have the exact same buoyant force? Yes. Yes, but it's sitting a little bit higher. Why? When there's not the enough water was displayed. No, 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 no. Ellie, what'd you say? A larger percentage of it is submerged. In terms of mass or volume? Volume. Volume. That's right, because now I've got that aluminum piece that's now down below, which is taking up some of the space of the water. So would it be a higher volume? No, 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 no. I still have to, do I have to have the exact same buoyant force? So how do you displace more wire? Because now that aluminum is down there taking up some of the space, whereas when it was like this, the only thing taking up space was the wood. Right, so how is... So, so now, the since the aluminum is taking up some of the space, it doesn't require as much wood to be below to create the same volume. So that wood that's up floating is equivalent to the aluminum? Yes. So the wood that's up above is the same volume as the aluminum that's down below. Because I thought that was just one of your answers that you were throwing in, I like the, where it's like halfway yeah, in between for like people that couldn't decide. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's not halfway in between. That's no, exactly. like, you know that time that you said? Well, like, you know that time that I said. <laughs> hey, you're going to have to get a little bit more specific than that. But when sweetheart. we were doing, like, the thing and you gave us the option of it's going to, like, continue to go kind of, like, I thought it was one of those mediocre no, answers. No, no. So Bug me and, and, and those of you that were on that train are right. So that's the winning train. So here's the deal. For those of you that were on the Titanic, right? So when you flip it over again, think about what stays the same. When you flip it over, what do you still have? The exact same point. No, no, no. You don't have the exact same point force, only if it floats, but you have the exact same gravitational force. Right? So just because that aluminum goes below the water line doesn't make it way more. Okay? So if it's gonna float, you're gonna have the exact same buoyant force. Okay? Buoyant force? To, to balance out the gravitational force. The question is, is what creates it? So when you flip it over, like that aluminum is taking up a lot of that space so the wood doesn't have to. So if we put any object in there and some of it is under the water, however much of that is under the water, its volume is equivalent to what's under the water there? Yes. That's pretty cool. I can calculate the volume of anything. Okay, well, let's see how you do on the lab. All right. Oh, my goodness. Okay, speaking of labs. I feel like this lab's going to be I don't like these. I've already lost it. Like, so I always just keep it clipped on. I'm like, I have to go. Here's what you're going to do on yonder lab. There's four parts to this lab. Okay? Half of the lab is going to involve aluminum blocks, and we actually, we're going to go in, into the actual chemistry lab to do this because we need beakers, right? So half the labs are going to involve iron blocks, and they're on this side. Half of them are going to involve aluminum blocks, okay? So here's the basic idea. You take a piece of string, tie a loop like ye, and we're going to use the two and a half Newton scales. Now, Here's the deal with these scales. You have to make sure that these are read zero. We have to have very, 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 very precise readings on this, okay? Normally I use digital scales, but something's crashed with our laptops and it won't recognize the Bluetooth, so we're gonna have to use these. So here's what you're gonna do. Take a two and a half Newton scale, hook it up like yay. Make sure that it's read zero. Take your string, Put that on there, okay? Hook up the iron. Now, your iron ones will typically weigh just a skosh past two and a half, okay? So, well, this one's actually right at two and a half, okay? So, remember, these are marked off to the tenths, so you can estimate the hundreds. 
I don't care where you go off on this <coughs> indicator, middle, top, bottom. I don't care because there's about two millimeters of difference. Just be consistent on what you're going to read off of this thing. So here's what you're going to do. Over here on that second page is where you're going to record the data. So what you're going to do is you're going to take 250 milliliter beaker and you're going to put that in there. Okay. Now before you do that, you want to make a mark on here because these are three centimeters tall. So what you want to do is we're going to record the reading on the scale when it's the water's halfway submerged and then again when the water is just covering the top of this. So that's going to be like the three centimeter mark. So you're going to get two readings. So you're going to have the iron block. Take a pencil. You can use a Sharpie with the water because the Sharpie won't dissolve. Eventually we're going to use ethyl alcohol and the ethyl alcohol will completely dissolve any Sharpie if you try and make a mark with the Sharpie. So use a pencil, something. That's actually going to be one of the most difficult parts of the lab is seeing where that mark is. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. You've got this thing set up. Put that down like yay. Okay. And then you're going to add water. Until it's half submerged. Now, make sure that you don't have any water on top of the block itself because then that's going to distort your weight. So, do this until this thing is half submerged. Then you're going to get the reading off of this scale. So, over there on page two, okay, so this would be the water and the iron. Then, once you get that reading, take the water, add more of it until it just covers that whole thing. Then you're going to get that new reading. So you're going to do that with an iron block and water. You're going to do it with the iron block and ethyl alcohol. You're going to do it with the aluminum block and water. And then the ethyl alcohol and the aluminum block. So you're going to get a total of four pieces of data. Now, here's what you're also going to need. Let me see the So you're going to need the area, okay? What, that's one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to take a ruler and very precisely measure the area of the block, okay? And these are all pretty much going to be about the same. So you're going to do that, get the area of the block. Then you're going to multiply that by G, and then you're going to multiply that by H. But you have to work in meters. Okay? So be very, so some of these, because for this deal to work, it has to be in meters. So that's what you're going to do in terms of the data itself. So you're going to run four trials iron, water, and ethyl alcohol, aluminum, water, and ethyl alcohol. The changes in these readings are going to be very subtle, especially when you compare like water to ethyl alcohol with the same block. Okay? So that's why you have to watch this very, very precisely. You have to be at exactly that mark. Okay? Because if you're not, then the data isn't going to make any sense. So these differences are going to be very, very, very subtle. So this is all about taking your time, make sure that, make sure that scale is re-zeroed each time so that you're starting from scratch. Okay? So before the lab starts, okay, you still have like 45 minutes. So what you're going to do is sketch the predicted shape of a graph where tension is on the y-axis. So pay attention to this. Tension is going to be on the y-axis, which is what, remember, this is what your scale is reading. Your scale is reading the upward tension force. And the volume of the submerged material is on the x-axis. So imagine this. I'm going to have tension here. I'm going to have volume that's submerged here. 
What's that graph going to look like? Do not answer it here. Okay, these questions all get answered on another sheet of paper, and you are on, and everybody's answering their own on this. Okay, these pre-lab questions, everybody's doing their own. I mean, you can work together, but everybody's handing in their own paper. Then use dimensional analysis to determine the units of the slope at the y-axis in tension, and the x-axis is AGH, where A is area and H is height. So what you're going to do is you're going to try and figure out what the slope represents just using dimensional analysis. Then on number three, you've got if the graph you drew in number one is for water, what will happen to the slope of the line if the liquid is much more dense like mercury? So in other words, instead of using water, I'm going to do this lab, but I'm going to use liquid mercury, which is very, very dense. What would the graph look like? Then, uh, if it was for water, if then if you want to change it up and say, okay, well, what if we use a, a, a solution that's not very dense? Like, in this case, we're going to use, you're going to use ethyl alcohol. What's going to happen to the slope of that line? So, you got that, then you've got the graph, you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to draw, and you're not going to have any, very many data points on here. Basically, you're, going to, you're only going to have two. You're going to have the depth of one and a half and three. Normally, I have like you do one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, and four, but the scales won't pick up that subtle of difference. So that's why I changed it and said, okay, we're just going to do one and a half and three. So that's why I said since you're only banking this off two data points, your data points have to be pretty good. Okay? So you've got graphs to draw, you have the calculations to do. Let's go do science. <laughs>